On my Huron shoe, I'm moving on to the heel now. You would use these instructions for any uh, pointed toes or heels. So on an Ojibwe or Cree style shoe, uh, you'll use this instruction for both the toe and the heel. And for the Huron or main style shoe, uh, it'll be just the heel. It's a smaller area, so seven wraps should be plenty here. It's very similar to the rounded toes and heels, just the setup is a little bit shorter. So I'll tie on here on the left on the little diagonal piece of edging line. And it's that triple half hitch. I'm going to take a little bit for granted here in assuming you have seen the rounded uh, toe section. So um, if both of your, your toes and heels are both pointed, you may want to watch that video anyways because it describes a few important principles. So I'll come straight across here to this right corner pocket. Go down around the edging line. When I come back up, I will come up to the rear of the weaving line so that I get that half twist when I go forward. Again, when I talk about left and right and rear and front, I'm just talking about my current perspective on the shoe. I'm not thinking about what the shoe will look like when I'm actually wearing it on my foot. I'm going to come straight up here, grab the edging line right at the, at the tip of the heel. Come back up to the right. Thus far, this is the same as rounded toes and heels. I'm going to come down to this right corner pocket. En route, I am going to pass this uh, first horizontal strand. Typically, we go over the first thing we pass. This is the only exception. We're going to go under that line. And then we'll go down around the edging line. But let's make sure we pull this line right up out of the way so we can go down to the rear of this line and then we'll come up between the previous line and the line we're currently working on up in that little space come straight across to the right corner pocket again that'll be um, to the rear of the previous line so I'm running this one in parallel come up to the rear of everything this has matched our, our rounded toe exactly thus far. Now with a rounded toe you might recall we continued up to grab this intersection and we, we did three parallel triangles in our setup. Um, with this pointed toe we're going to consider, or this pointed heel I should say, we're going to consider um, the tip is filled out now with just this one pass. So I'm going to come up and I'll grab the edging line down here somewhere around the middle. I'll pass a horizontal and an upright on root, so I'll go over the first type, under the second. Always go down around the edging line, with the one exception of our purple elephant. I'm coming up here to the rear, and then I'll go straight across the top here. So this is where we now diverge from the uh, the rounded ones. We've come up and then gone down staying in the in the left going another parallel triangle but instead we're starting to get into our figure eight pattern so I'll come across the top I'll go over the upright under the up left grab the edging line these ones will want to slip down but if you get them up nice and high and pull them tight you can keep them up uh, sort of in the middle of the edging line. Now I will come down to the rear crossbar. I'll go over the first type and that's two up lefts. I'll go under the second type which is two horizontals. And now I'm here on the left side of the rear crossbar and this will be the purple elephant same as we had uh, on the rounded toes and heels. So I'll describe that again. This is the only time we come up from the bottom on the edging line
And then I need to separate these two horizontal strands, take the one with the big knot and push it forward, and get my finger in between those two strands. Now I've got my finger just to the left of this diagonal that I've been working on, and I'll put my strand down where my finger is, and I'll bring it back up to the right of that diagonal. So in between the two horizontals and to the right of the diagonal, that is the purple elephant. This brings us back to where we first started the pattern on the uh, rounded ones, rounded uh, toes and heels. And we are now into the pattern. So the setup was, uh, was a little bit shorter. We're right into the pattern and everything from here on is the same. So the pattern again is going to be a corner, which is an immediate weave, a bottom, which is the delayed weave, a corner, which is an immediate weave, a center, delayed weave, top, immediate weave, and center, delayed weave. Corner, bottom, corner, center, top, center. So I'll start with my corner. This is an immediate weave. I'll go. I'll remember to ignore this diagonal because I've already wrapped it up here. It's taken care of. So I will just pass one horizontal, which I'll go over, one diagonal, which I'll go under. Grab the edging line on the left side of the frame, come up to the rear. Corner. Next step is a bottom and it's a delayed weave. I'll go over the two uprights, under the two up lefts, grab the edging line, coming up to the front. Now I've got another corner which is an immediate weave. Again I'll ignore this uh, frontmost horizontal as being already taken care of. So I will go over a diagonal, under a horizontal, over a diagonal, under a horizontal, On the right side of the rear crossbar, uh, there's no purple elephant, so I will just go from the top down around the edging line, just like I do everywhere else. Coming across the center, this is going to be a delayed weave. I'll go over three horizontals. Let me just pull that a bit tighter. Over three horizontals, under two diagonals. I'm going to catch the intersection up here because it's in a, a nice uh, spot. It's aligned well. So I will go down around the edging line to the front of that intersection, back up to the rear of it. That's going to lock this strand in place so it can't shift on me. That's my center. Coming across the top, that's an immediate weave, so I'll go over the upright, under the up left, over the upright, under the up left. Catch the intersection again, so I'm going down to the rear of it, up to the front. Coming across the center, this will be another delayed weave over three diagonals, under three horizontals. And that brings us back to the left side of the rear crossbar, which is a purple elephant. So I'll come from the bottom up on the edging line. <clears throat> Pull that tight so I can see what I'm working with. I've got my two horizontals and I'll need to go in between them. I'll go down to the left of the diagonal back up to the right of the diagonal. Now I'm back to step one, which is an immediate weave in the corner. Remember to ignore the horizontal, which I've captured as part of the purple elephant. Ignore this uh, most recent diagonal, which I've twisted around already. So I'll have two over the horizontal, under the diagonal, over the horizontal, under the diagonal. You can pull that nice and snug. Grab the edging line here on the left side. 
You can see my triangle here is getting quite small. I'm, I might want to consider doing my center weave um, for, for a slightly easier weave. You could center weave right now going over one, two uprights and then going under and up left. I'm going to wait one more round so I'll, I'll make this weave um, just a little bit tighter by, by delaying a little bit longer. So I'll go over three uprights, under three up lefts. Grab the edging line, coming up to the front, center is an immediate weave, so we'll go, or sorry, not a center, a corner is an immediate weave, over the diagonal, under the horizontal, over the diagonal, under the horizontal, over the diagonal, under the horizontal. Grab the edging line, right side of the rear crossbar is, uh, is not a purple elephant, so you'll just grab it from the top down as per usual. Coming back up to the right. <clears throat> Coming across the center is a delayed weave. You can see our triangle is very small now, so I will do my first center weave here. So I've got one, two, three, four horizontals. I have to treat all these four horizontals the same because they're the same type of strand and we never break that rule. But I can change the order. So I'll go over one, two, three of them. And then I'll look for this up right to go under. Then I can go over that last horizontal and I'll finish by going under two more diagonals. And you can see that we'll pull the weave around and get it to match what we're looking for. Coming up here to the top, the top is an immediate weave, so I will go over and up right, under and up left, over and up right, under and up left, over and up right, under and up left. Grab the edging line, coming up to the front, pull that one nice and tight so it doesn't slip down the frame. Coming Back across the center, this will be another delayed weave. Again, we will look at the previous parallel strand and step back one step from it, and that'll tell us when to do that first to, to start center weaving. So it went over the three and then went under horizontal, so we'll go over one, two diagonals. Under horizontal, over the diagonal, under the horizontal over the diagonal. One thing I forgot to do was mark my very first center weave so that I can match it on the other shoe. That was right back here if you remember just a couple of steps ago. So I can put a little mark there to help remind me when I do the next shoe so that the pattern can look the exact same. Now I'm back here left side of the frame left side of the frame is purple elephant so I will come from the bottom up around the edging line I'll go in between the two horizontals down to the left up to the right coming up in the corner over horizontal under a diagonal over a horizontal under a diagonal, over horizontal and under a diagonal. This is my last time coming across the bottom here, so I will uh, split the difference between my, my uh, two adjacent strands and I'll grab this intersection. So I'm going to go down in front of the intersection, back up to the rear of it. Now I'm coming across the bottom. Typically this would be a delayed weave, but there's no delay possible. So that tells me this is my last time ever coming across the shoe. So I'll go over the upright, under the up left, over the upright, under the up left, over the upright, under the up left, over the upright, under the up left. 
grab the intersection on this side. I'm going down to the rear of it, back up to the front. And then I've got one corner to finish, which is an immediate weave over the diagonal, under the horizontal, over the diagonal, under the horizontal, over the diagonal, under the horizontal, over the diagonal. Brings me to the edging line. I can go bottom up or top down, it doesn't matter. Tie it off with the triple half hitch. And then tuck that tail into a couple of twists. Snip it off. I also like to count how much I have left. I started with seven coils. I now have about one couple of of full coils left so um, on my next shoe I'd probably only cut six coils and that would leave me uh, a little bit less waste and, and less material to pull through every time. So that's my heel done. Tuck in this other strand as well.